it's the 12th event of the season with just two more tournaments until the Tour Championships. For some, it's a race for a top 60 finish. For others, the focus falls on promotion to the Challenge Tour. A little bit later on in the show, we'll be chatting with some of the leading contenders. It's been a, been a long time coming, so yeah, nice to obviously have uh, three good weeks in a row and obviously do one again this week. Trying my hardest to get over the line. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, it's been, it has been tough. But obviously there's still room for improvement. We also take a look at the route to professionalism. Daunting, challenging and exciting. But how do our young pros make such a tricky transition? Well, am I ready? Um, that was the kind of the big one. Once it came round to turning pro, it was a, it, for me it was a relatively simple decision. And of course, we focus on the Studley Wood Championship. The stage is set, 157 players, the focus is on that order of merit. Waite leads the way, John Parry takes that second spot, Will Ennefer, who came so close at Studley Wood just a year ago, is third, Dermot McElroy, a winner at Luton, is fourth, and Joe Dean takes the last spot. All that could change over the course of the next few days as we head into the Studley Wood Championship. Well, there are the top five names of the Order of Merit as it stands. Another name for you, Kit Alexander. How are you doing, first of all? I'm great, and it's great to be back on the Euro Pro Tour this week. Absolutely. A few tournaments left, but we're at the business end now. What's at stake? Well, the pressure ramps up at this stage in the season, doesn't it? We've only got two regular events after this one. You've got to get into the top 60 to get to the Tour Championship. So chances are running out, essentially. If you want to get at the top of that Order of Merit, you need a win. And anyone that does get into the Tour Championships inside that top 60 has a chance. If you're in that field and you win with £25,000 up for grabs, chances are you're getting your Challenge Tour card for next season. So everyone knows it's now or never for making it to the Tour Championship and getting that Challenge Tour card. Well, you mentioned pressure at the start there, but how much pressure is there for, for those at the top to stay at the top, but also those, you know, the top 60 trying to qualify for the Tour Champs? Well, the target is on the back of the top five. And of course, you would rather be in that top five at this stage in the season than chasing it, but they cannot rest on their laurels. The job is far from done. They've got to keep going and everyone behind them is chasing them. Even the odd 10 pounds, 100 pounds here or there, that can be the difference between getting you into the Tour Championship or when it comes down to it at the end of the season, the difference between fifth and sixth and getting a Challenge Tour card or not. OK, well, of course, we're at Studley Wood, but what are the expectations for this week? Well, we know it's going to be low scoring when we come here to Studley Wood. It's always in excellent condition, a par 73, so loads of opportunities. There are birdies and eagles galore. And I think the challenge is, as a player, you know that's the case. You're stood on the first tee thinking, well, just four under is probably about par, really, around here. The cut could come at six or seven under par, even if the wind doesn't blow. And if you're looking at getting your hands on the trophy, well, you don't want to be too far off of 20 under par, I don't think, when all is said and done at the end of three rounds. So you know you've got to go out there. The putter's got to be firing. And on perfect greens like we have here, if you roll it well, you will go very, very low. Well, thanks a lot, Kit. We're over to week 12 of the Euro Pro Tour. So time to head over to our commentators. Thanks, Gabby. Thanks, Kit. And as usual, at this very low scoring venue, the overall standard of play has been outstanding. It's a West Country tussle at the top, with in-form Mitch Waite from Bristol tied for the lead, together with Somerset's Tom Sloman. The decisive day begins with a par four. That Gary Alice is no pushover whatsoever. No, Phil, not the longest of par fours, but a very, very tricky par four. Uh, narrow fairway, bunkers that come into play, and then a, a very undulating, undulating green. So a lot depends on where the pin is placed on this uh, final round, but uh, easy to drop a shot on the first hole. In position A though, off the first tee is Paul Maddy. Looking good after rounds of 70 and 66 thus far. Yes, perfect position. Nice, easy swing and a fantastic result. Comes the old nerves when you start out. Now this is David Haig. Par, par, birdie start. The man from Morton and Norton Golf Club in Yorkshire. Wow, so birdie on three, and it looks like probably being birdie on four. Certainly does, Phil. 
there after that wonderful approach from Paul Maddy, the simplest of brushes in for his birdie. Just thinking about David Haig, he's a Studleywood specialist. He was second at the Q School here, shot a closing 64 to achieve that feat. And given the start he's made today, it could be a repeat. Certainly could. And uh, again, now we take a look at Robbie Busher. As you can see, he found one of those bunkers we spoke about earlier on the first. High face, so not able to take enough club to quite reach the green. Giving himself a chance. Mitch Waits might well have won a Clandy Boy recently. The putter let him down in the final round, missed three or four quite short ones. And going up the hill from that distance, that was a misjudgment. Yeah, a bit tricky coming up there. Couldn't see the bottom of the flank, but completely agree, Phil. A bit of a misjudgment. Nixon now on this 183-yard par three. Four. Early doors, they're peppering the flags. That's a fantastic shot. This is Robbie Busher, 59th in the order of merit at the moment. And as we've already said, the top 60 go to Slaley Hall in the Tour Championship. Nice. Nice indeed. A good result today. Would solve any Tour Championship worries for him. Nixon. Just a whisker of movement from the left lip on this one. Yep. Oh, just caught it off there. <laughs> Wall of death and disappears. Now, will the white putter behave a little better today than it did in Northern Ireland? Is it just deserted him from that sort of four feet range in Northern Ireland? But that's very tidy. And he'll brush that one in. Well, again, David Haig looking good on five. It's 378 yards, so another one of those short par fours that the players fancy taking advantage of. A mere flick. Yes, it's remarkable how modern equipment, strength of the players, unless a hole's well over 400 yards, it is almost a drive and a flick. And Busher, firm, but never, from the moment it left the putter, you could see it was never on the right line. Shot gone for Robbie. now after another excellent approach yes that's three in a row very very good and that's also been the case for Mitch Waite who is top of the order of merits through sustained excellence triumphing in the Nokia Masters was the icing on the cake for him Mitch, you had a nice steady start to the season and then things have absolutely caught fire the last few weeks what's been going down yeah, just some, some decent golf, eh? Um, it's been a, been a long time coming, so yeah, nice to obviously have uh, three good weeks in a row and obviously doing well again this week. Is there one thing that you can pinpoint that has caused that switch and that magnificent form you found yourself in? Probably just getting over the line in the, you know, in the, in the first one at Manning's, really. I think as soon as I realised that I could uh, go over the line and win, it sort of freed me up a little bit, and obviously those next two weeks, I felt that I could have won those two as well, but it wasn't meant to be that those two weeks and hopefully we go again tomorrow and we can see what we can do out there. You sit at the top of the order of merit. Are you someone that likes to keep an eye on that list through the season and you, you see your name at the top there? In all fairness, if I can keep producing the golf I've produced so far, being at the top's where you want to be at the end of the day. Um, I've just carried on just playing my own game really. There's, there's so many good players behind. Listen, it can change very, very quickly. Um, but as I said to many people, I'd rather be at the top with a with a, with a a sort of few thousand pound lead um, than, be, than be sort of 
sort of chasing now at this part of the season because like you said when you're six and under through two rounds around here and you don't know if you're going to be leading at the end of the, the second day um, yeah that's, that's that's vitally important to be at the top. Does it change your mindset at all being at the top as opposed to as you say being one of those guys on the outside looking in and now chasing as we're at the business end of the season? Yeah I, I believe that I'm in the driving seat I really do and um, is where we all want to be. Uh, we all work hard to get into these situations. It's taken me a while to get into this situation as a pro. No, I feel I feel pretty good at the top at the minute, and yeah, that's why I want to stay. Wise words for someone who is playing wonderful golf right now in the proverbial groove. It has been wonderful to watch over these last few weeks. Probably a little bit fortunate there, slightly wayward, but it's come out in the clear and finished up about pin high. Up on the fourth, William Harold, former winner on the Challenge Tour over in Belgium. Good player, plenty of experience, William Harold. But that is quite a big misjudgment there. Flew the green, and uh, as you can see, Made rapid progress to the fifth tee. Now quickly, here's Kit on the seventh. The par five seventh is a massive scoring opportunity for the players here at Studley Wood. You get your drive away and you'll find yourself around about here in the fairway. If you can be in the right half of it, so much the better today, because as you can see, the pin is just over there in the back left from here. You're looking at about 200 yards and that's nothing more than a mid iron for the players. And with the breeze as it is, slightly helping slightly off the right as well. Well, that's absolutely ideal for working it into that flagstick. But beware, that putting surface is surrounded by water. Yes, it's an opportunity, but an errant shot and you could find yourself going for a swim. David Haig, though, looking for something special. We saw him birdie five. Well, lo and behold, he birdied six as well. So another birdie here would be five on the trot. And it is another very good approach. And uh, probably be using the putter from the fringe there. Now with water in front of the green here, this is not a very appealing shot. Oh, and I think it caught some of the trees. Will I take anything off it? It does. I can speak from personal experience. The twice I've played here, Gary, on both occasions, that water has snared my ball. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it looks fairly innocuous, but as you said, Phil, it just flicked the leaves and that was enough to pull it down in the water. As we look at a winner from earlier in the season, Shepherd. Steady, steady. Would look very good from his end. Now, where we saw the the ball of William Harold, awkward spot here. As you can see, probably his only option was to take, try and take a straight face club and bang it into that hill and hope it jumped onto the green, and sadly it didn't. Well, that was just. A wee bit tentative from David Haig. The putter needs to work once more. Which weight? Taken a penalty drop from the penalty area. Steady. Oh, goodness me. I it looked as though it was going to check nicely, and then on the second or third bounce, it just completely released. Stephen Shepherd from a town in Florida on the panhandle called Niceville. And that was a pretty nice chip, although there's just a tiny meat on the bone. Poor Maddie. Very lofted with this second shot. You can see he's trying to slide the club head under the ball to get maximum elevation and stop, but threw it too far. So then, for five birdies in a row. For the average club golfer, Gary, that would be Nirvana. For these guys, it's 
almost commonplace. It, it, it is, Phil. It's strange. I mean, you're absolutely right. But the standard of play on, on this tour, um, we've seen five birdies quite frequently this season. Just a great pup. Just got snagged up with that little bit of longer grass. I'd be a bit disappointed to only make a par. As for William Harold, he would be delighted to make a par. Yeah, a little bit of green to work with as he got it running up the hole. No, sir. I'll tell you what, though, Gary, from where the tee shot finished, a bogey, it could have been worse. Yeah, it could have been from that lie. You could have easily have stubbed it or duffed it or topped it or all manner of horrors. Now, Mitch Wade, this for his dropping only one shot. Double bogey when everybody's making birdies is hurts. Now this is Shepherd, the winner at Clevedon. Out of nowhere. Can he come out of nowhere and win this one as well? One thing with Mitch Waite is that he generally puts these adversity behind him very quickly. It was a setback and it relegates the money list number one to a share of second. Pavan Sagu, six under through ten holes, has surged up the standings, while Tom Sloman, now leading by two shots, and Busher both find themselves in healthy shape at the Studley Wood Championship. More from rural Oxfordshire after the break. It's hard to believe we are just off the M40 here. Welcome back to the delights of Oxfordshire and the final round of the Studley Wood Championship where talented rookie Tom Sloman in his first full season on the Euro Pro Tour leads by two at a tournament that began with a bang. Josh Hilliard's course record 62, bear in mind this is a par 73, on the opening day. Josh, you shot a course record, a magnificent 11 under par in the opening round. Where does that rank in your best rounds ever? Number one, obviously, <laughs> um, first course record of mine. So, yeah, I mean, it was a day where I couldn't have been a shot better and you don't get those days very often. What was it that you did so well, or was it a case that just everything was on point? I mean, I, I, I can't say I didn't play brilliantly, but I, I, I made the most of all my chances, which obviously you need to do, especially out on this, on this tour. I mean, there's so many good players. But um, yeah, I, I had a lot of opportunities and I made the most of them. From the lowest to the shortest hole here, Gary, tell us about the eighth. Yes, only 156 yards. As you can see, very uh, pretty hole as you look down. But today, with the pin at the back of the green, the water isn't going to come into play. And really, it's all about selecting the right club, lofted club, probably no more than an eight or nine iron, to get back to this pin. Good straight hit. Should give an opportunity. Right club, just a tad offline there. Now here, you're going to see the low hands and the very wristy swing of Stephen Shepherd. Yes, in, 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 in the way things are these days, so many of these players swing in a very similar fashion. But Shepherd does do it slightly differently, but one heck of a result. William Harold could not be better placed on seven. Harold and all of the later starters looking to light up the course, much like Pavan Sagu. Pavan, six under for 13 holes today. What's been the key to your good scoring? Um, I've kept it in play off of the tee quite well up until now. Uh, so that's been, that's been key in allowing me to then just be a bit more aggressive into the par fives. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've birdied all of them and eagled one. So that's definitely been the, the key. Can you tell us a bit about the conditions and how the course is playing today? Uh, certainly the greens are a bit faster. I think maybe about the foot. And uh, we noticed that on the practice screen this morning. They're a bit firmer too. 
Um, so yeah, playing a, a little different, it seems to have dried out a bit and whether that's going to make it easier or tougher as the day goes on, I'm not sure. Uh, certainly some holes will play shorter, the par fives I think potentially there's going to be lots of eagles coming coming in. And coming into the closing stretch, we have got a couple of par fives to finish. Is there opportunity to pick up even more shots here then? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. I think this is, you know, this is uh, the tough stretch of the course. If uh, we can navigate this, you know, fairly well, then uh, two good birdie and eagle chances coming in. Definitely. Great playing so far. Keep it going, Pavan. Thank, Thank you. you. Birdies galore for him. Not a birdie in sight yet for Sloman. Looking to put that to rights here on five. That's one rather more than I expected it to. Now, what a delight this is, being able to tap in a putt of this length. What a smashing two. Now, chatting with Kit is done. Pavan Sagu, no good whatsoever. Needing to get up and down here to avoid a double bogey. And where he's gone, he's staring at a six here at 14. Now, Todd Sloman, this one, probably not 30 inches, firmly in. Oh, dear, that was nasty. That just jumped straight left on a quick flip there. Well, he was steady, but now it, the wheels have come off the steadiness. After four straight pass to open his day, his first bogey, and it means if Harold can hold this, suddenly he's got a share of the lead. Not too much movement on this, but it's one of those that you lures you into thinking that it's going to break from the right. Now, Haig does not want to lose any momentum here. Ooh, lucky, really, to catch the lip. I think that was going farther past than it ended up. Probably so. Now, Sagu. This to only lose one shot off his momentum. But, uh, yeah, disappointing when you've been going so well. Just a tap in for birdie for William Harold to move to 14 under, right in the thick of things. The man who's won on the Euro Pro Tour before at the Belfry and at Lunghurst Hall. Well, you'll be glad to see the back of this hole. Haig trying to remain bogey free for the day. Little left or right this. Oh, and just peeling off low. Annoying. Annoying for him. And also that double bogey six for Pavan Sagu on the 14th meant he was relegated from the leaderboard. Up top, it's Sloman by one from a group of three players that could soon become four if David Haig can follow the trend and take advantage of the friendly par 5 ninth. Well, he's in pole position to be able to uh, get something straight back. Steady on. Yeah. I'll be disappointed with that. Now, Robbie Busher. Has he got a gap to squeeze it through? Certainly see one. As he turned that in the water, it looked like it was just overturning. Maybe watering. Shepherd. He'll be putting from there. 
platform Andy on this short par 3 oh very nicely judged now Haig couldn't get up and down on the 8th for par can he get up and down here for birdie Needs to hold that to match what he did on seven. Yeah, seventh, 527 yards. Uh, as you can see, bunkers don't really come into, into play for these players. The key is to get a good straight hit away, uh, and more importantly, a good straight second. Mitch White will be licking his lips when he gets to see his second shot here on the seventh. Just 203 yards into the par five. That pin tucked in the back left, but what breeze there is, is slightly off the right. He can use that just to help it feed in there. Aim at the middle of the green. If it does just turn over a touch and get closer to that flag, all the better. And he could have a very makeable eagle opportunity. Needs to show mental fortitude. Shot finds the punting green. We'll have a long range attempt for an eagle. Now, this is Jack Doherty. Best result so far this season. Tied seventh at East Sussex National. He won an event on the Euro Pro Tour way back in 2009 at a place called Faith Leg. Mm. Interesting, Phil, as we. Have a look at Steve Shefford coming off these beautifully manicured fringes. Left a bit of work to do. He obviously thought it was going to slow up a bit off that fringe. Now, earlier on, we saw Robbie Busher behind the trees and his ball curving towards this penalty area. As you see, we just caught sight of him taking his penalty drop. Now, lofted flip over the corner of the, of the penalty area. Not bad. The golfing gods always give you the same test, don't they? Missed a putt of approximately the same length on the previous hole. Oh, and Haig lips out on nine, this time for birdie. It's been a really good front nine, Gary, but it could have been so much lower. Yes, he'll... Uh, he must put it behind him as he goes to the end. Now... Dirty. This 15 footer just now comes down the hill, gathering speed. Yeah, a little bit left to do. Mitch Waits, eagle putt across the screen, comes up as you could see first of all, then downhill. I think he's judged this really nicely. Yeah, great judgment of pace. Shepherd with his interesting little mannerism of sort of hitching his shoulders before he settles over his putt, but works very well. He knocks that little tester in. At this level, Gary, one thing you don't want to do is be putting off the fringe for a par on a par five. No, it's a, a sorry tale of woe, and you could see there as the ball went onto the green how the fringe really threw it off to the left. So still work to do for Busher there. Nice wrap, not enough pace. Paul Maddy has got a degree in maths and computing. He will know exactly what the numbers required to win this thing, and he will know he needs a bag full of birdies. David Haig from just beside the red penalty area launches it over that tree we could see and all in all from not a great angle he's nearly got it on the edge of the green so Phil here we are Robbie Busher this for his bogey oh 
hurry to see this. Just take your time. Not marking the ball. It is only a tiddler, though. Well, I think you just... Uh, you think you'll brush it in and his brain's got a bit fried. Oh, dirty. This one, just over three feet. Come on, Jack. Thank you. Nicely done. It's shirt sleeves out there, nice and warm. But we're about to see a snowman. That's what they call an eight across the pond. The problem for Busher, he didn't get his second shot across the pond. Haig elected to chip from the fringe, which is not a bad effort. Uh, having had to wait a moment while Busher's woes unfolded, Mitch Wait makes his birdie. And with playing partner Tom Sloman only making a par there on seven, that means Wait has got a share of the lead again. Haig right in the middle of the cup. With the last group out, now deep into the front nine, it's as you were when they teed off. Sloman and Wait sharing the lead, although just a couple of shots cover the top half dozen. A game plan is vital, and not just on the course. Deciding to turn pro is a massive decision for any aspiring golfer, but when you've made that decision, there's another choice to be made. Do you go it alone or decide to employ a management company? Let's hear about some of the advantages of having a great team around you. I, I guess no one really knows if you're ready. You find that out when you turn pro. But um, it was just making sure that, that my team was right for me um, and making sure I had the best chance of going into the pro game with the best tools and the best team I, I could have. I waited a little longer. Out of college, I, I stayed amateur for another couple of years and got to play for England. And through that time during my amateur career, I'd, I'd already built a relationship with um, Jimmy at Trinifold. So once it came round to turning pro, it was a, it, for me, it was a relatively simple decision. It's an expensive business, particularly at this level, and sponsorship plays a vital role. I don't want to be thinking about Oh, if I make, if I come tight 10th here, I get this uh, this amount of money or or whatnot. So with with them being supporting me fully, it's um, it's just that great relief off my shoulders. So I can just play golf. There's so many little things that they all add up to such a big big amount. I mean, when it comes to like some of the opportunities I've had to play on the chancel this year just with the contacts they've got. There are various routes into the professional game and the college system in America is a well-worn one by young golfers in the modern era. I think most of the pros these days that are playing well on tour, these youngsters, they've all come through the college scene. Um, I think they'll all agree that the experience that they gain in college is what helps them feel comfortable and feel at home on the PGA Tour. So I feel it's the best way to guarantee yourself to have the best chance of getting onto the, onto the PGA Tour. Every professional golfer dreams of making it big on the European or PGA Tour, but the reality is not all of them are going to make it. It's so competitive, and of course, there is the risk of injury for any professional sports person. Now, the chance of not making it is not something any pro wants to worry about while they're chasing that dream, but it's vital that their management company plans for that unfortunate eventuality because if you've got a chance to, to play sport for a living, amazing, go for it. What I think Trinifold do really well is manage those expectations, give them the opportunity to achieve their dreams, but also put things in place in case they don't make it, right? Because the stats are not pretty for you know, making it to the top of any sport in any career. So the fact they've got that safety net and that support group around them is really important. I don't, there are many uh, agencies that do that. So to be a part of that group and help for those sport, those athletes is, is really important. Who will be on the money at Studley Wood? Find out in just a moment. At the Studley Wood Championship, the stakes are high. 
season's end is approaching. Only five players will be promoted, and currently occupying second in the order of merit is a former European Tour winner from Yorkshire. That's John Parry, who's been there or thereabouts most weeks. John, second in the order of merit. How pleased are you with that at this stage in the season? Yeah, it's great. Um, obviously, you'd like to have it sort of sewn up before you go into the final, but um, there's obviously a chance of that still happening. But in a good, you know, it's in my hands, and that's the main thing going into the last few events. We spoke before the first event of the season. You said consistency was a big aim for you this year. Do you feel you've achieved that? I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did the first part half of the year really, and then the last half, I feel like I played okay, but not scored as well as I would like. But I feel like my game's sort of getting back to where it needs to be. It's a long old season as well, so you are inevitably going to have those peaks and troughs. How important is it to stay patient and know how to deal with and handle those situations? Yeah, I think um, that's something I think I can still do better as well. I think you're always sort of learning especially when we played the sort of six weeks in a row earlier in the season, I felt like I had a really good routine and I sort of drifted out of that. And then once you start not maybe performing as well, you start trying to change things a little bit, how you're practicing. So I think coming into the last few events, I'll go back to what has worked and just stick with it. And what is it that has worked? It's more the practicing with a bit of a purpose. I think when you, I noticed when I was playing more weeks in a row, you start getting a bit slack and a bit lazy with your practice you know what i mean you do the easy things you think oh, i'll just hit a few warm up instead of actually going through your routines i think that's the thing i need to get back into shooting three under meant that parry unbelievably missed the cut here by four shots so if not parry who is in contention well despite making comparatively slow starts tom sloman and mitch Waite share the lead but their lack of birdies has thrown the event wide open among those still in the hunt is matthew nixon 11 under playing the ninth. Yep, ball a bit below his feet. Launches away with the wood. Generally, when the ball's a bit below your feet, it'll always fade in, which I think is the route he's taken. And that's a very good effort, almost up onto the fringe of the green. At 434 yards, the 13th is quite a stern test. But Haig is putting for birdie. Had a great time on the MENA tour at the start of 2020 before play was suspended because of the COVID-19 pandemic. He won in Bahrain, finished second in Egypt. Sloman, tee shot on the eighth. Ooh. Hold on, That's, gosh, that flicked the tree and almost found the out of bounds there. And a bit of luck, so, but not a good spot. From down below, loft needed by Matthew Nixon, and not a bad job. Lovely lad, Matthew. Yes, you can certainly see uh, several of the players. Sagu mentioned earlier on how the greens are a bit quicker today and firmer. But there we go, nicely negotiated. So from Haig, who made bogey on eight, having missed the green to the right, Sloman massively left. And to no one's surprise, having to weave the ball through the trees, not finding the green with his second. Now, that was a horrible position that he was in there. Nixon, this for his birdie. Down the hill, running well. Running very well. All very simple. Bumped into Matthew at a very unlikely location a few years ago, just outside the Crucible Theatre on the night of the World Snooker Championship final. He had tickets. That's nice. Big fan. Well, I think the best that can be said about Sloman is that he's slowly getting nearer the hole. Now Paul Maddy, second on nine. Looking for a hat-trick of birdies on this hole this week. favourite to do it from there and also 10 Gary is another great birdie chance it is um, 543 yard par 5 giving an opportunity but you've got to be careful because if the ball strays a little right it'll be
drowned in this big pond we're passing. So it's a narrow area where most of them will drive between bunker and pond. And then you've got to be careful because if you get too far to the right, your view is blocked by the tree that we're now just going past. Uh, but definitely a chance for more profit. Tried to scamper onto the green and nearly made it. As for Sloman, all kinds of problems on the eighth. This is so bad. Well, he did his own commentary there saying so bad, and I must be honest, you can't disagree. A five on that titchy hole. Yes, all stemming from that very wayward tee shot with the short iron. Dirty. Brisk swing. Launching the ball. Nice contact. Launching it on its way. Very good result. Pin height, about 25 feet. Good job from Nixon. The last time the tournament was played here, two years ago, the 10th statistically was the easiest hole on the course. Been replaced this week by the 18th. Nicely judged chip there from just below the green by Maddie as we look at Nixon just hoping to negotiate this tiddler. Nicely done. Makes another move forward. Now for Jack Doherty, this is to get within a shot of the pace. Just a little bit of movement from the right. It was trying. No eagle, but a certain birdie. It's one of those tournaments, Gary, that even so late on, you have a plethora of possible winners, including the man we're going to see now, Paul Muddy. Absolutely. And I like it when, you know, a course offers up lots of scoring opportunities par fives like this that you know you you can be uh, able to make a, an eagle uh, but equally they can bite you and the six could come Haig and Shepard are making big moves also one off the lead is William Harold but Waite is back out in front so many are in the mix such as Paul Maddy Good position on the 10th fairway. What's Maddie going to show us? A very good approach. Doherty, 39 years of age now, turned professional in 2003. I think it's fair to say his best year was 2017 twice runner-up on the Challenge Tour in France and in Norway. And he's done himself no harm there, plenty of chipping room. William Harold, centre of the fairway. Can he find this? Green and set up an eagle opportunity. He certainly can, that's not far away, Pop back up the hill. Doherty should never be underestimated. He played a full season on the European Tour in 2014, and he made 12 cuts. That, though, from that distance, I'm sure he would describe it himself as clumsy. Yeah. Now, what can Newton do? He can produce a fantastic shot like that. The old Texas wedge. But getting caught out. 
Marco Harold. This one not too far away for his eagle. A little bit of movement from the left. Running well, running very well. Oh, right in the bottom. That'll take him to 16 under and into the lead. And that's what can happen around here. Eagles are available. Nice stroke from Doherty. He's content with a birdie on 10. So having seen Harold, can Newton emulate leaving the pin in? And he certainly can. Very calm. Having left his approach put short, Maddy makes amends. He had another in the reckoning. Now, on a hole that's going to have a big impact on the outcome, here's Kit. The par 4 12th measures 362 yards on the card, and you've got a decision to make when you get here because it is drivable. If you decide you want to go up the left over those trees, you can get it up and around the green, but it's risky. There's a deep bunker and there is plenty of woodland up there. What we'll see most players do is just play it out to the right, a long iron into position to leave a wedge into the green. It's a beautiful approach shot. Sleepers in that bunker short of the green makes a really imposing hazard there. But when the players get here in the final round, what will they do? Will they pull for the big dog and go for the green? Or play it the old fashioned way? Find the fairway and trust your wedges to get the job done. Well, the seasoned campaigner, Doherty, has taken the wise route, the sensible route. And I do think that that is a sensible choice, really. You know, why risk it if you can pop one in the fairway, play a good wedge like that to about 12, 15 feet. Why risk losing your ball, putting it right behind a tree? Now on nine, Mitch Waite is down there somewhere. Here comes the ball, the man who's tried to become the first double winner of the season. From where he was, more than acceptable. Definitely was. Now, dirty. here has he read this correctly he certainly has and that's the way you play it make a three now when you make a bogey and then have a birdie straight afterwards it's called a bounce back this would be a, a double bounce back double bogey followed by eagle no but the main objective has been achieved a tap in birdie steadying the ship Sloman rocked by what happened at eight. No doubt encouraged by what's happened at nine. Up to 14 under with his first birdie of the day. Now, William Harold, who followed up his eagle on nine with a birdie on 10 to move to 17 under. Choosing the iron off the tee to leave the wedge to the green. Launches it high. Oh, but not very accurately. See it drop down into that gully down the right there. That's not very good with the wedge. Wait to join the lead. Newton's second shot on the 12th. angle to thread it between the trees threads it right up to the hole bit unlucky to spin back quite so far can't imagine he'll miss this wait tied seventh at Camberwell Park one at Manning Seath second at Luton Who third at Clandy Boy six other top 25s he's been the star of the season so far Certainly has, as we find Harold down in the sand. I didn't realise it had crept into the bunker. And uh, by the aggressive swing, it didn't look as though the lie was that good in there. The great thing about Studley Wood is that you can 
finish in an absolute blaze of glory and come from nowhere to pinch the silverware. Now, even though he's four off the lead at the moment, Nixon not without a chance. And the same goes for Taylor Carter. Second shot. Honing in on the green. Is it going to hold? No, but plenty of green to work with for the chip. Yeah, here's Carter, who's looking to emulate what Robbie Busher did yesterday, finishing Eagle Eagle. That would set the target at 18 under. Don't think it would be quite enough, but it would make them think. It would be a target, that's for sure. Now, Harold, this to salvage his par. I don't... Ooh, I didn't think it was going to break enough, and then it broke too much. So one goes back to 16 under par when this pops in. Back to Carter and a line of commentary that your late father might have come out with here, Gary, just thinking about him, thinking about that wonderful voice. Taylor Carter, two surnames for the price of one. Yeah, exactly. Yes, I can see the old man coming up with something like that. Nixon's at the stage of the round where these have to go in. And it does. After the good chip, can Carter insert this? Newton, this 10-footer for his birdie. Up the hill slightly, but pretty straight. Yeah, very well done. That moves him to 14 under. So Carter really now, realistically, only making par here. His title hopes have gone, but he could still finish very prominently. An all invaluable experience. Wait's wait to dip under the card is over, thanks to back-to-back -back birdies either side of the turn. The situation remains fluid, with everyone who's featuring on the leaderboard being within three of the pace, and William Harold right there, hoping to forget about his mistake on 12 and reboard the birdie train when it matters most. In form, Mitch Waite is leading the Studley Wood Championship. And more good news for order of merit number one weight. The four players immediately below him in the rankings aren't applying any great pressure. Although with a neat and tidy finish, Will Ennefer could squeeze into the top ten here. Will, it's been a really good season for you so far. How do you assess things to this point? Yeah, it's been definitely a real positive season this year. I've played some real good golf at some in some times, but it's been a little bit struggled the last couple of months, but I feel like the game's just turning around, so I feel like we can have a nice strong end to the season. You got that first win on the PJ Euro Pro Tour at Montrose. It felt like it had been coming for two or three yeah. seasons. How did it feel to finally get yeah, that, that trophy? Yeah, that moment was uh, was quite big, really. I've just confirmed to myself that I know I can I can do it. So, yeah, I've been close on a few occasions, so it was nice to really get it done in the way I did as well. Did it feel different coming to events after getting the win? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I, a lot of confidence straight after it. I think went straight to open qualifying after and missed out just by a few there. So... And then went to the Vale with like no prep and still after round one, I think I was straight in there at ninth. So it gave me a lot of confidence early after the after the win. You mentioned the last few weeks have been a bit more of a struggle. Why do you think that's been? Uh, just to make sure of everything really. I feel like I forgot how long a season is really. And you know, the fatigue mentally and physically. So just been trying to refresh the last few weeks and just end strong. 
near the finish line now. Just a couple of events after this one, then the Tour Championship. You're in that top five as things stand. So what are your kind of thoughts ahead of the final few events and that closing push? Yeah, just just take every event as it comes. I mean, they are very important, especially that Tour Champs. I mean, 25K for the win, like you, you win that and you don't even you don't even look like you weren't going to be in the top five. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's just stay patient. Just keep doing what you were doing for the whole season and just be as fresh as you can. How ready do you feel for the step up if you finish the season in the top five? Yeah, yeah, I feel definitely ready. I'm out four seasons on here and I've played a few Challenge Tour events, a few Main Tour events, so I definitely feel like I can compete out there. Great play in this season. Keep it going. Cheers, Kit. Thank you. Cheers, well. Cheers, mate. Promotion for weight would be wrapped up with victory today and he's one in front of William Harold. As for Taylor Carter's title hopes, well, an eagle is absolutely essential. So, Kit, on 18, how's it looking? That is the view that Taylor Carter has for his second shot here at the 18th. And it's only 214 yards left on this par five. The ball, well, it's over in the first cut of rough, but it's lying absolutely lovely. He can get to the back of it, no trouble at all. And it's on a little launch pad as well, on an upslope. So that's going to make it go extra high, help him control this and land it soft. He'll need to land it relatively soft because these greens are quick and the pin is over there in the back right. And with the breeze helping, the wind slightly off the right and him over here on the right hand side of the fairway, not the absolute optimum angle, but a great opportunity for a closing eagle or birdie. First though, back to 13. Just in the, the right hand semi rough. Jack Doherty. Realising the ball will release and judging that one almost to perfection. Mitch Wait on this narrow short 12th. Just having to work one along the edge of the tree line. He's had good distance control today, Wait, giving himself some chances, moving in the right direction. But his birdie attempt, absolutely after a good shot from the trees, finds the bottom of the cup. Now, I don't think 16 under will be enough to claim the silverware. But if Carter can make eagle here, well, at least he's laid down the gauntlet. Unlikely after that. See a little bit on the 14th. But helping a bit just to fade the ball towards the pin. Good shot. And it's really good to see James Newton back in form. Started the season off positively, tied 12th at Holliford, and then followed up with nine consecutive miscuts. So this welcome scoring. Wait, this putt across the green. Good pace again. Yeah, nicely judged. Not in, but no stress when you're tapping in from a couple of inches away. Yeah, the entrance to that green can be claustrophobic. The the gap between the trees is rather narrow, even for these guys. It's very narrow. You know, it really is with the overhanging branches. It looks like you've only got about 10 feet to squeeze the ball through. And his attempt. Nice. Tink on the pin, down into the bottom of the cup. Yeah, so Maddie at 15 under is only two off the lead, and that's where James Newton wants to be by holding this. He's another one who keeps the pin in to great effect. Back to back birdies on 12 and 13. Nothing to be sniffed at. Definitely not. Taylor Carter taking his putter from the fringe. Up the screen, long putt up the green. Swing in a min little minute down to the left slightly. Yeah, Here it comes. 
Just a few more rolls. Well, a beautifully hit tee shot from Waite. He just looks the part, doesn't he? All the angles are right. The rhythm is lovely. Oh, I think he's looked, he's looked a class act over these last few weeks. I really do think that. Okay, a very lofted club. The ease of the rhythm, the steadiness. It's all almost hard to put your finger on exactly what it is. It's just a whole package. Slightly hanging live for Tati on the 15th. Lovely stuff, though. You know, when he was 16, Gary, he trained with St Johnston and Dundee. He was a very good footballer. The goal today is to lift the trophy. Ah, interesting that he had those choices. Sloman now. Oh, I thought that might have been going slowly enough as it got to the hole to just topple in. But as you could see, wriggled around the edge. One of those days where he must feel as though he's shooting 80. With everyone around him making a boatload of birdies. Yeah. This was what we had so much trouble with a couple of weeks ago. But they're beginning to find the bottom of the cup again. Lovely putt. Nice birdie. Yeah, tightening his grip on what would be a very significant result. Now Carter... I play, mate. Good running Nothing wrong, mate. Cheers, guys. Well, these playing partners said it all. Well played. Bogey free, 66. Here at Studley, that's seven under par. You know, this venue is a much loved regular stop on the Euro Pro Tour. One of the reasons being the warm welcome we always enjoy. Well, it's been a couple of years since we were last welcomed here to Studley Wood, but I'm joined again by Kenneth Heathcote, uh, owner of the beautiful Studley Wood. Thank you for having us back, Ken. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Um, having everything we've gone through in the last two years, it's, it's great that we're here. But this is more like your second home than a, than a golf club, isn't it, really? Uh, my wife would say it's my first home. <laughs> uh, after lockdown, we, we stayed here quite a bit. We, we've got an apartment upstairs and it's not our house, but we, we needed to stay here just, just to keep the club alive, really. We're part of the community here, so we felt as though we needed to, to do something. So we did food hampers into people's homes who couldn't get out or for whatever reason didn't want to go to the supermarket. So it was really well appreciated and we're glad that we did it. It's a, a good thing. Well, the Euro Pro Tour is back and it's back here. Um, how did it come about being stationed here in the first place? Um, we were recommended by a golf professional. He looked at it and said it was just a great track and uh, told Dan that he should bring it here. And, and Dan Godding very, very kindly brought it to us. And we've been here, you know, ever since. Uh, it's what, three years, four years on now. And uh, we're very proud to be tied in with the Euro Pro Tour. It's, you know, we're a little golf club in Oxfordshire. You know, and we're not world famous. Maybe we will be one day, I don't know what for. But, uh, you know. You, you then. <laughs> hardly. Um, but it, it'd be great, you know, it's just great to be tied in with this tour. Can you also have some highlights over the three years it's been stage here? Yeah, I, um, uh, Scott Fallon did the course record 63 with the Euro Pro Tour, and then yesterday uh, Josh came in with a with a 62, which is our new course record 11 under par. So from a golfing point of view, that that, that that those are the highlights because obviously if they can play this golf course like that, they have to be. And watching them play is incredible, and and it's just brilliant to see. Um, they're all very very good, uh, but sadly only one can win every week. Ken Heathcote, one of the unsung heroes of golf. Now, what a horrible spot to find off the 18th tee for poor old James Allen. Really unlucky. Could just about chop it to there. On the 13th, Robbie Busher. You can see just this little one, little more than a foot for his birdie, which moves him to 13 under. on a hole that's produced over 30 eagles and over 200 birdies. The length of your third shot on 18 does not want to be this length. Nevertheless, Alan still has a put for birdie. Big busher again, perfect. 
position on the 14th. Oh, a lovely shot there. Getting closer by the second. Yeah, great recovery, really, when you consider out of the eight on the seventh hole. He's two under par. And Jack Doherty also going very smoothly. Can James Allen hold this one having been so unfortunate? No, but from the lie that he had, he'll be probably quite happy to make it his par. Busher, after that very good approach. Curls in back to back birdies. Very good, as you say, Phil, making amends nicely. Always strikes me as a really sweet putter, Alan. And from where he was in that bunker, a five, not too bad. Wait continues to lead by one from Dirty, with Harold completing the top three. Taylor Carter leads in the clubhouse, but the name of Dermot McElroy doesn't appear. That's because the Northern Irishman, who lifted the trophy at Luton Hoo last month, was one of the notables to miss the cut here. Precariously fourth in the order of merit, that was an obvious blow for McElroy, who before leaving, spoke with Kit. Dermot, great scenes as you got your first professional win just a couple of weeks ago at Luton Hoo. Looking back now, what was that like for you? Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic to get my, my first win uh, on the Euro Pro. Like, I've played all season, I've came close once or twice uh, for the season, so to finally break through, it's great, it really is. You followed up your win with a trip to Northern Ireland as well. You got to play in front of your home fans on one event over there this season. You went in as a champion. What was that like to turn up knowing that you were a Euro Pro Tour winner on home soil? It was really good. It was a wee bit different, obviously. You know, everyone came up to me congratulating me. You know, it was just, just really cool. Uh, obviously, a different experience of, than I've had before. So, uh, great to see that I have the support back home um, and even my friends and family get, getting to watch me as well. You've shown some good form in a couple of starts on the Challenge Tour this season. How much are you itching to be there on a regular basis? Yeah, yeah, like uh, my 2018 season, I was basically playing a full Challenge Tour, so I know most of the courses and uh, I know what to expect in Challenge Tour. It's a very, very good standard, but again, when you're finishing top five in EuroPro, you're, you're playing to that standard. McElroy still uncertain, but for weight, every promotion box could be ticked with success at Studley Wood. It's a scenic drive through the glorious Cotswolds from Studley Wood to the Vale, the terrific venue for the Worcestershire Masters, where in July, after knocking on the door so often, Joe Dean delivered his maiden title on the Euro Pro Tour. Dean was also fourth at Montrose and could yet record a top 10 result here. If we'd have given you this season to this point at the start of the year, would you have taken it? Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it's great to be in the top five just, but We'll um, keep going, see how, it, see how it pans out. How big was it to get that win? Yeah, it was fantastic. I mean, sort of being on here for the last three, four years and trying my hardest to get over the line. Uh, not going to lie, it's been, it has been tough and you sort of doubt yourself along the way sometimes. But yeah, yeah, to finally get over the line, it was fantastic, yeah. You've been very consistent at this level. You've got promoted previously without getting the win. You, ha you were that good in the other events. Yeah. What did you do to enable yourself to finally get your hands on that trophy? I think it was just more patience. Um, I think before I was leaderboard watching a lot and panicking to a certain extent when I saw someone coming up and there, there's always someone what comes up through the field. So the fact that I didn't leaderboard watch that week or the last day especially, um, I think was possibly one of the main reasons why it got me over the line. You've been promoted to the Challenge Tour from this level before. You had a season there. What did you learn from that experience? Um, travel is difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's one thing driving five, six hours in a car, and then there's another thing spending your time, I mean, two airports a week, give or take, and it's tough. Uh, you need a very, very, very good mindset for it. Do you feel better equipped to deal with the Challenge Tour and play your best golf there the next time you get the chance? Oh, yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Um, like I said, I think I've learned the hard way and 
at the end of the day, it's learning's learning, whichever way you look at it. So, um, yeah, do my own thing and stick with it. Strong season so far. Good luck the rest of the way. Cheers, Kit. Thank you. Cheers, John. This Studleywood Championship is intriguing. Mitch Waite leads by one from Jack Doherty, but with successive par fives to wrap up proceedings, much could change yet. Case in point, the penultimate hole, which has produced scores ranging from three all the way to seven. And here we are, just looking at the 17th, just turning around the slight dog leg. The bunkers come into play up here. It's all about getting a good tee shot away and then giving yourself a chance with the middle iron to find this green, which is actually very undulating. And uh, if you get in the wrong place, a three putt is very possible. Nixon wasn't ideal off the tee. But after that, still a birdie opportunity. Robbie Busher, pull slightly below his feet. Can he find the green? Oh. Okay, just about clinging on to the top of the little hill there. Now to take the clubhouse lead. Nixon needs this, then an eagle on the last. And it was never going to be there. Still an awful lot to play for, though. Our leader. Just from the light rough, gap between the trees. A cracking shot, that really is. It's a lovely view. Lofted iron. Yeah, he's a, we've said it before, but he is a lovely swinger of the club. At 373 yards, the 15th is innocuous on the card, but it's been the toughest hole on the course. And the 16th here is the second toughest. It's produced, Gary, more double bogeys than any hole so far in the tournament. Now, I'm not saying that Jack Doherty is going to make a double from there, but he'll be hard-pressed to save bar. He certainly will. Robbie Busher taking the round route from the fringe not bad so here we are at the 16th which is causing a lot of trouble and for a hole that's only 206 yards that may be surprising but it's a narrow shootout from the trees to a sort of egg timer shaped green but if you stray a bit right you kick down towards the bunkers and long and if you miss the green you're going to really struggle to get the ball up and down yeah, with a front pin and a slight miscue, that little stream across the front isn't completely out of play either, as we see Paul Maddy tackle the hole. This little one for Mitch Waite, as you can see, just looks as though he's aiming a little bit out to the right. A weak dribble. So much for what we saw a couple of weeks ago. Let's hope it doesn't attack him over these last few holes. Yeah, that would have given him a two shot lead over this man, Jack Doherty, who's struggling to pencil in a three on 16. Yeah, from the type of shot, it didn't look like it was a great lie down there. And quite a big bank to climb up. The ball of Robbie Busher. Oh, refuses to drop. That's his first blow since the eight on seven. Electing to chip, Paul Maddy. Very far away and very well judged.
Now, we saw a lot of David Haig earlier in the programme. How's he going to finish up? Well, I can tell you one thing is absolutely guaranteed. It's going to be his best result on the Euro Pro Tour of the season, superseding tie 24th at Manning's Heath. And after a good biff off the tee, that's for Eagle. Dirty. This to salvage his par. Yeah, it's nicely done, because it was awkward after that, missing the green from the tee. Awkward, then that could be so, so important. How can Haig post 16 under? No, always low, always left. But I think it's fair to say that with just three events left this season at Levin Links at Castletown, and finally the Tour Championship at Slaley Hall, if he gets there, he's got every reason to be optimistic. Eight birdies in that round, including five in a row. And he just tidying up that tiddler. Now, maybe stymied by the trees, it's Matthew Nixon. Up and over. And on. <laughs> what can Newton show us from the tee on 16? Sanded a great contact. Nicely played. Yeah, worthy of a little applause. I'll tell you what, Gary, they're bringing in this 18th to its knees. They really are. I must admit, I, I like having the two par fives and finish to bring it in. It reminds me a bit of the old days at Wentworth when you had the par five, 15th, 17th and 18th. And games could change very, very quickly. The tall figure on 16, William Harold. A very good job indeed. Nixon, just uh, secure his birdie on the 18th. And again, a couple of little blemishes early on, but a solid round of 68 for 515 under overall. Now this is Jack Yule, part of the an ultimate groove. Not been in the best of days for him. Oh, Until then. Well done. <laughs> what a bonus. <laughs> Lovely view looking down towards the green with the clubhouse behind. That dirty just from the lightest of rough. Yeah, pretty good. Maybe half a club short, but pretty good. Newton, former Irish amateur champion, who's received a lot of guidance from a Ryder Cup hero, Jamie Donaldson. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. So close. Unlucky or lucky? Did the pin stop it from rolling well past or stop it going in? The perennial debate. Yeah, it is always the best. I think on that occasion, I think it was a bit of a bonus. It hit the pin. I think that could have gone quite a long way past. Maddie. Ooh, sounded a bit thin. But a good shot, even if it was a little thin. You know what they say? Thin to win. If he holds that, he's 17 under. Leader in the clubhouse. Absolutely. Harold, just up a very slight slope here, not far away, as you can see. <sighs> now this, to lead on his own, to replace weight at the top.
Well done. Wait. Playing up this 16th. Looking at the shape of that. Looking as though he's trying to draw the ball maybe a little bit in. Well, it certainly started to the right, and there you could see no draw and really missing in a difficult place. Now Newton. Good drive. What about the second shot? Can he put the cat amongst the pigeons? Hold on. Oh. Well, we're getting a great look at this one. Just needed a bit more pace. The ball was running beautifully, turning towards the hole. But there you have it. Well, at least he has the consolation of substituting Taylor Carter and becoming the, the leader in the clubhouse. Harold choosing to pitch the ball pretty much the whole way up this green for his fourth shot and wait with his pretty wayward tee shot there can he produce a bit of magic from behind the bunker okay, sir, mate. Oh, great shot. absolutely right as his fellow players said it was a great shot yeah amidst all the eagles and birdies we've seen here today that was perhaps the best shot of the lot perhaps the most meaningful reasonable from Newton simplest of birdies for Doherty to wrap up an excellent 66 good inward half 32 five under yeah so the the target has been set And that's why that put, in terms of retaining title aspirations, was vital for Harold. He relegates himself to 15 under. He's not going to do it now. But this important for Mitch Waite, particularly coming off a missed putt before, but not this time. Well yeah, that's Brilliant. a great up and down. That's, as you said, Phil, almost as valuable as an eagle. Now, if Newton, the man who keeps the pin in from almost anywhere, can hold this, bingo. That means an eagle on the last, and he would match Doherty's clubhouse total. All of that means this. Maddie and Harold are joined third. Waite has company at the top in the form of Jack Doherty as the final three ball arrive on the 17th tee. Can Waite deliver the decisive punch in what's been a tremendous fight for supremacy at Studley Wood. We'll see you after the break. Not too far from the dreaming spires of Oxford, the Studley Wood Championship could witness the graduation of Mitch Waite to next year's challenge tour. Wait joint leader with Jack Doherty, a 66 shooter for the second day in a row. Mind you, with the 18th yielding more eagles and birdies than any hole on the course, you have to think Wait remains favourite to receive the silverware. As for the closing hole, here's Kit's assessment. This 18th here at Studley Wood is a stunner. It's all downhill, so you can see it all out in front of you off of the tee. We've seen drama here in the previous editions of this tournament, and I've got a sneaking suspicion we'll see plenty more today. It measures 534 yards, so it's easily reachable in two. It's a real eagle opportunity, but if you get it wrong, there are hazards. There's the water, that greenside bunker as well is no fun. A par might lose you it, but an eagle or a birdie, and that could win you the trophy. Whenever I see a par 5 18th, I always think about Bob Gilder, famous American golfer who 
holding two on the 18th at Westchester to win a PGA Tour event back in the 80s. That's what William Harrell needed to do to match the clubhouse target. But of course, it's catching lightning in a bottle. Yes, that's a challenge, Phil. Busher. Good shot behind the centre of the green. Yeah, very nice. Been a lot of good stuff from Robbie Busher today. Indeed. And the same applies to James Newton. One more good swing and his first top ten of the season will be secured. From there, that's going to be the case. Which wait. Close this out maybe with a couple of birdies or even better. Hold on, hold on. Yep, nicely on the green for Wade. I'm afraid it's not going to be King Harold today. Even after that. But on the 17th, Mitch Wade could be a couple of holes away from being crowned again. Mitch Waite has got 40 feet or more here on the 17th, and it's a putt that comes in two parts. The first two thirds is uphill, and if anything, slightly right to left. Then the final third, it levels out, and it looks like it might even move a touch left to right as the pace comes off it around the hole. A tough read, but two putts from here for the birdie, and he will have sole ownership of the lead once more. So we see Newton's chip. Good job. I never really liked those where you almost had the same amount of uh, fringe to chip over and green. They always frightened me, those ones. But I'm sure Mitch Waite has nothing to be frightened about. Let's see if he reads the putt as Kit told us. Really all about the pace. And I think that's pretty good. It's got that up to within that sort of top of a small table. James Newton, four times a winner on the NCAA Division I circuit in America, representing the University of Central Arkansas. That's his best on the Euro Pro Tour. Now, what about Busher? Back on 17, playing a, a supporting role. Harold, what you can see before you. been a day of so near so far yeah he briefly led but it all fizzled out at the end playing the, the last seven holes at Studley Wood in two over in this company will not get you what you want wait very good. Banished all thoughts of any missed putts. Birdie and into the lead. Almost forgotten the 36-hole joint leader, Tom Sloman, who now needs a birdie at the last to shoot a level par 73. And here is the last. Yes, as Kit told us, it's elevated tee, lovely looking down onto this fairway. The real key on this hole, though, is to get a good straight tee shot away, because if you catch either of these bunkers, you've then got to lay up into this narrow little isthmus between the, the lakes there, which is awkward. But a good tee shot, and it's a relatively straightforward to find this green and have the chance of a putt for an eagle. One of the reasons the guys have been getting so far down this hole you watch the ball land on the fairway. It just scoots forward. There you go. Massive bounce and all the run in the world, even though eventually it ends up in the light stuff.
Another big tee shot for Mitch Waite, down 18. It's given him just 166 yards left for his second shot here on the par five finisher. A one shot lead, one hand on the trophy. He can really attack from here. Wind is slightly off the right. He might just choose to hold it up into that breeze with the back right pin. But the way he's playing, he could finish with the firework eagle here. And what a way to close out the victory that would be. Well, he made a full collection of birdies on 17. Can he do the same on 18? Or maybe better? Look, no more than about an eight iron that he's going at this. This with. Here it comes, just releasing up. Oh, a shot of great confidence. Yeah, composure throughout. Yeah, I think we can say the engraver can start working here. Not for Robbie Busher, but I think considering the adversity he suffered on seven, it's been a really good round. But the man of the season is walking up the last, about to clasp the trophy. Yes, a couple of putts to become our first time double winner. It's running well. Oh, it looks running. Yes. Oh, right in. What a, what a way to finish. That's a fantastic way to finish. Well done, Mitch Waite. Finishes with the Eagle 3. Home in 32. Just the problem of the 6 on the third hole. But what a wonderful round and a great winner. Yeah, 21 under for a 54-hole event. Just underlines the standard on the Euro Pro Tour. As for Tom Sloman, it's a day that he will want to quickly forget just one horrible moment for Busher the rest pretty good as for Sloman this for a 73 level bar and that's good enough for a share of fourth place together with Paul Maddy. In the frame, though, the champion is Mitch Waite. Mitch, congratulations. You've won the Studley Wood Anniversary Championship. And what a way to do it. Tell us about that finish. Uh, I was trying to lag it up, to be fair. I think I'd take the bird. I didn't know what the scoring was, actually. Did I need that one or not? Uh, no, you had a one-shot cushion stood on the 18th okay. tee. So, yeah, so just, just cosy it up there. I thought birdie, birdie finish would be... I'll probably do it after the up and down on 16, so... Uh, yeah, yeah, nice way to finish that. Yeah, it wasn't all smooth, Taylor. Those up and downs on 14 and 16, just how vital were they? Oh, crucial. Yeah, yeah, I knew how big they were. Um, even with sort of players that weren't quite sort of a few shots behind me in my group, I know obviously Tom's a very dangerous player. He can get it going at any point. The two par fives to finish. Uh, Robbie finished Eagle Eagle yesterday. So I knew that I needed to keep the foot on the gas. And obviously with other people around, I just sort of just focus on my own game. And just, uh, yeah, they were crucial in the end. How pleased are you to be the first man to two wins this season? Yeah, after the last, uh, obviously, two events, finish it coming so close again. Um, yeah, it's nice to, nice to get over the line again. Great, you know, great stretch of goal for myself and um, long may it continue. And tell us how it feels to know you've got your Challenge Tour card for 2022 in the bag. Yeah, yeah, crucial. Yeah, vital. Um, you know, I know I'm going to Corn Ferry Tour Q School, so um, to now know that, you know, if I do get through stage one there, I won't need to come back for Tour Championship. That's, that's, that's massive. Wonderful season. Well played today. Cheers, Kit. Cheers, mate. Many pressed hard, but in the end, weight more than held firm. What a way to pull off a stunning victory. At 21 under, he was only one off the all-time Euro Pro Tour scoring record, set by Scott Fallon here in 2018. It gives us great pleasure, men's captain and I, to present the trophy for our 25th anniversary. Mitch, very well played. Thanks very much. Well done, pal. Cheers. Thank you. Apart from that coveted trophy, Wait also collects £12,500, and that carries special significance. You see, Wait widens the gap at the apex of the Order of Merit to major proportions, and with only three counting events left this campaign, his promotion to the Challenge Tour for 2022 is now under lock and key. Mind you, that won't stop Wait appearing in our next event, the Motor Caddy Masters, at lovely Leven Links up there in Fife. Regardless for Mitch, 
the wait is over. He's challenged to a bound. For now, though, from Studley Wood and another tremendous Euro Pro Tour event, it's goodbye.